first half of this video and then lost that file. So if you notice later on that the video switch angles and my shirt's different, that's because I recorded this after that part. So thanks for watching this video or thanks for clicking on this video. This is about my design here which I created. Now this is, I just like to call it SF 2.0, which stands for Science Fair 2.0 because this is my second entry into the Ozarks Engineering and Science Fair. So this design that I created has four hydrometers which can read the moisture values in the plant soil and it has four different plants. So there's one hydrometer for each plant. Now that can read each individual plant's soil moisture content values. And based off that, this device can water each plant according to those values. So each plant, whenever it needs water, is watered then. It's not watered on a time schedule so if it didn't need water and it still got water, that'd be a waste of water. This way, the sensors can water the plants whenever they're needed and only whenever it's needed. It also features grow lights so you can grow indoors and all year round that way. To power it all, I'm using the Arduino Uno with an L298 in stepper driver and RTC module. I'm also using four hydrometer boards and three relays. So whenever I started out this design, this was a continuation project for my first science fair. So the reason I designed this was for my local science and engineering fair. This was my entry in the engineering category. So I entered and won second place in engineering math and physics category, won $200 from the Missouri Society of Professional Engineers, and was invited to compete in New York at the International Science Fair. I also have recently created an instructable about this project, which you can see in the link below. So I started off this project by doing lots of research online, and I already had ideas of what I wanted it to look like. So my original idea was a rectangular frame like this, and it would have the similar watering head and an LED light bar on the top. It would also have some kind of water container with electronics, but I wasn't sure exactly what I'd be using quite yet. So whenever I did some more research, I looked up for what I wanted to do, I looked up the parts that would be required to do those things. So I wanted to have a moving axis, and I had a 3D printer, so I based that axis off of the 3D printer axis. So once I got an idea of how I was going to go about this, I went ahead and purchased some parts. Once they started coming in, I started assembling a few basic things. I assembled the main frame, and then I started working on assembling the electronics. So I started out by wiring the electronics together in small groups to see how they would work together overall. For example, I started out with the Arduino, one relay, and the lights. I messed around with the code to figure out how they work together to get that to work overall with the main code. I then started experimenting with the hygrometers to see how they worked with the soil and with the Arduino. I would test one hygrometer in different moisture contents to see how the values of the output changed. I went and moved on to 3D modeling. I 3D modeled all the parts that you can see that are green and black myself using Tinkercad. Yes, Tinkercad. So these were some of the parts that were 3D printed by me, so I designed all of these. So these I first 
made, we're going to go on the fan as a cover so you don't get your fingers and stuff in there. But once I put both of them on each side, it made the fan a lot louder and it was, it reduced the uh, output by a lot. So I took those off for now, but I'm thinking whenever I take it in to the fair, I'll have to have these on for safety. This is the shower head. So this is where the acrylic tube goes in and then the inside's hollow and it's got all these holes drilled on the bottom. So then it pushes the water in through here and then through this rectangle it fills up and then comes out the bottom. Then these two pieces are what hook it onto the moving head. And then since the hose is on there, I added these triangles to give it some strength. So over being moved back and forth a lot, it will not break. This is the hygrometer holder, so this goes in the back so whenever the hygrometers are not in use, you can take them and slide them right into the top and they can just sit back there. This is the part that is on the moving head and this is the arm so whenever it goes to home itself, it can click the end stop switch and know where it is. This part slides into the 2020 and holds the linear rods. This part also hooks onto the 2020 and holds the linear bearing for the belt that drives the axis. This is, I printed three of these parts and this holds the relay onto the electronics board. This is the frame piece for the 2020. It slides one in here, one in there, and one in there, and then they are all screwed down. And this is what holds together the rectangular frame and makes it strong since it's got the triangles here as uh, angle supports so that way you can carry it. And This part was printed and it holds the NEMA 17 stepper motor to the side frame. And so I just used the screws that came with the stepper motor and put holes and then it screwed into the 2020 over here. And then I also put some hot glue in between the stepper and the 20 because whenever they were touching, whenever it turned, it made a very loud noise because it was using the whole frame to resonate the sound. So now it is a lot quieter with that kind of cushion of hot glue. This is the power switch housing, so it's just screwed on here, and then it has a backing, and then the inside is hollow, and this is where the on and off switch is, and it very faintly says on and off here, and then on the back I printed a separate piece, and it's got a hole for the wires to come out, but once I got it all soldered up, I used my soldering iron to melt the two pieces together so it fused it into one piece. Now this backing was printed in two different pieces and then they're glued together and then I've also got some pieces I printed on the inside that I glued to strengthen it. So this is the cover for the wires that are on the inside to make it look nicer. Now the board for the electronics where they're screwed down is also printed in two pieces and it is held together by the same kind of thing on the inside. But for all the electronics I just screwed them down to this PLA board to display them and try to make it more organized instead of putting them all in a box. This was printed using the Prusa software 
so that way I could print the first couple layers in black and then print the next layers in green so that it would pop. And this is one of the cooler pieces on the whole thing because I just like how the green pops on the black. And SF 2.0 was the name I came up for this design at the beginning because it just stood for Science Fair 2.0 and I thought it sounded kind of cool. And it says CNC plant growing machine. custom printed parts that were put together to make this design. Once I figured out how the electronics worked by themselves and I got the frame assembled, I moved on to assembling all the electrical parts together. Whenever this thing runs, uh, the Arduino does all the processing and the Arduino then reads all the hygrometer values and based on that it decides if it needs to water any of the plants or not. And if it needs to water a plant, it then sends a signal over to its relay. That relay turns the power on and off to the L298N. The L298N is the driver for the NEMA. I was having problems with the NEMA overheating, which I ended up learning was because stepper motors, whenever not being used, still draw current to keep their torque and stay in the same place. So, since I'm running this device 24-7, it was overheating quite a lot because it was always drawing current and it wasn't doing anything. So that was a waste of energy and it was overheating. So to fix that problem, I did probably the worst way possible. Um, I just used a relay to turn the power off to the L298 in. So even if it's wanting to draw a current, there's no current to draw. I did some more research and I heard other places that it's probably not the best idea and there are other boards which you can just turn the current down whenever it's not being used. But again, this fix was two weeks before the first science fair and I was in a pinch to figure something out. So I just slopped on another relay I had and it works. Once the L298 is turned on, the Arduino tells the stepper motor to take negative five steps in a loop. And that loop keeps going until the end stop is switched. Once the end stop has tri been triggered by the arm on the head, then it knows to get out of that loop and perform another loop. That other loop depends on which plant is being watered, and in that loop it tells it how many steps to take to the right over the plant that needs to be watered. Once the head has been driven that many steps, it then stops over the plant that needs to be watered, then it turns on the relay, which is for the water pump. The water pump turns on for two seconds, which pumps enough water up through the acrylic tubing through the shower head to water the plant. Then the relay is turned off to the L298N so it does not overheat when not being used. After that, the whole code is put on a delay since it doesn't need to check that often to water plants. Some things I ran into the first time around were, like I said, the power supply was being weird. But I could, that could have just been my wiring, so the new power supply is working, I've got that fixed. Then another thing was I added a power switch because the old power supply did have a power switch on it and I like that. And I think that's also a requirement for safety with the judges at the science fairs. So the new one also, I printed this on and off power switch and just running the 12 volts in so you can turn on and off everything. And that just cuts the power off to everything. I added a heat sink to the new power supply, and I haven't mounted that yet. There's a couple things I still have to mount, but that will be zip tied down here at the bottom. Then I also have a couple more future things I wanna do, but it's about three weeks until the International Science Fair, so I don't wanna screw up the design too much where it doesn't work whenever I take it there. But some future updates that could be are, I thought about adding a ESP8266 to it, so you could have an app which controls the watering schedule and stuff also. And then adding maybe a webcam up in one of the brackets so that way you can view your plants and that can be ran through the ESP8266 also. I've also thought about maybe just using a Raspberry Pi 
to run everything and that way it already has web interfaces built into it but that's just some ideas for the first round of testing I used the plants you can see here so these are fake plants I had I don't know what it says I think it's oregano cilantro basil and one other plant and I had those seeds because I thought since they were herbs, they would grow better in this smaller area because they were smaller plants. Now after that, I just started yesterday my second round of testing, which this time I'm using bigger plants. Hopefully they'll grow faster and look better for my data collections. So the grow lights, at first I was planning on putting some kind of a bar over the top and that would hold one row of grow lights. But then I realized that they fit perfectly into the slots on the 2020 and that way if I slid it in there it would make it look better and then I could also have two sets of grow lights. So I've got a strip of grow lights in this front 2020 and a strip in the back and that way the plants have more grow lights and they're hidden and they look better. So the water and access I pretty much copy the 3D printer's axis because that's all I really knew about. And so I used a stepper motor, a NEMA 17, most 3D printers, and it's belt driven to the shower or the watering head. The watering head has four linear bearings and that is hooked on to these two steel rods which run across the top. With that, the top piece has one big black piece that I printed and then it has the shower head screwed on and the in-stop switch. So this triggers the in-stop whenever it comes over. And then the shower head is hollow and has the acrylic tubing which fits in here. These frame pieces so that way since it's going to be moving a lot it doesn't wiggle and get broken. And then on the bottom it has lots of holes that were drilled out so that way it has a shower like effect and or a rain like effect for the plants. The other side has a geared bearing which is on this printed part. So once I got that part done, I started working on the coating because that was the scariest part for me. So to start off with the coating, I just looked up the, like I just would look up Arduino code for L298N and I would download a example code and then I would mess around with it, tweak parts of it to see how that affected the actual stepper motor being driven and then I would put together little codes and I would save them separately for all the parts. So I would have like a relay section of code and I would work and experiment with that until I got it working the way I wanted and I'd save it there. Then I'd have an L298N code and I'd work on it and work until I got it where I wanted. Then I have like hygrometer, RTC code to figure out how each of the individual codes worked on their own. Then I had to mix the codes into one big code. And that was where it got difficult. So I pretty much just put the same code and just kind of overlapped it. Some of the hard parts with the code were learning how to use the RTC module and use that to trigger an event with the relay. I also had problems with that and the plants code being mixed into one because I put a big delay on the plant code so it wasn't always running, but then that delay would also delay the RTC. So if the plant would home water and it would delay for an hour, if in that hour it was 8 o'clock, the lights wouldn't turn off because the code was still being delayed. So I did some research and learned that you can have two loops running at the same time in one code. So I made a separate loop for the RTC module and then a separate loop for the plants to grow. Once I got that hooked up, it worked a lot better because I could keep my delay on the plants, but I could have the RTC code always running so that way whenever, right whenever it's 8 o'clock, it can turn the lights off and not be delayed anymore. I also am using an old computer fan strapped down here to blow air over the plants. I had someone suggest this on my instructable I posted, saying that the breeze would make the plants have to grow stronger roots to hold against the breeze, and that would give them more surface area to suck up nutrients and water, thus grow bigger and faster. If you want to see the code, it is posted on my instructable, and the link is in the description below. Once I got it done and worked out a lot of the problems that, there, that I had, and yes, there were a lot, it could successfully read the values of four different plants and water them depending on those values. It would also be able to turn on the grow lights at 6 in the morning and turn them off at 8 at night 
giving the plant 16 hours of grow lights indoors. This way the plants could thrive indoors without natural light, and they could also be grown all year round because the temperature indoors was more suitable than that outdoors during the winter and harsh summer conditions. Using sensors and grow lights like this are much more practical and agricultural. It is more expensive and more complicated to set it all up, but in the end it is more efficient because you only water the plants whenever they need to be watered, and they're indoors so the water is not all evaporating immediately and it's a waste of water. Growing indoors, you can also grow to the specific optimal conditions that the plants need to grow, which can yield more produce because the temperature can remain constant for the plants, so you can grow even through the winter whenever it's cold outside but warm inside. Now at this scale, it is not the most practical, obviously, because it would just be more easy to water the plants by hand instead of building this giant contraption. But the idea of this was to show how using sensors and grow lights in the big scale could be more efficient than traditional agriculture. At this scale though, and the price point it was to build this, it wasn't exactly practical, so you don't have to comment and tell me that. I do realize this, but I try to go above and beyond also on some things because it's for a competition and the judges like to see things that are more complicated than just watering the plant by hand. Overall, this project cost a little over $400. Yes, it is very expensive, but it was a lot of fun putting together, and I learned way more doing this than I do at school. Sorry about that, teachers. Now, I do have three other videos on my channel about this, but I don't really recommend checking them out because I said I was going to post weekly update videos, but it's been nine months since I've last posted a video on this. I do want to say thank you for watching. Uh, this has been a really fun project to work on, and I've learned quite a lot after doing this project. Uh, if you did enjoy it, I would sure love a comment saying what you thought about it and any suggestions you might have to improve it because I will always be working on this design. Also, check out my Instructable that I wrote about it. Link will be in the description of the video.